Hello and welcome to this watercolour demonstration. This is the Easter weekend of 2021 and uh, I had a weekend away with my wife Kate in our camper van and this is Kyber Bay in Pembrokeshire. So I'm looking at the scene here to try and decide on what to focus on for this watercolour painting. But, uh, there's a lot of uh, fields and uh, houses here so I will simplify the, the scene slightly. So I've uh, got myself set up here on the, a nice sort of viewpoint looking across so one final sort of check to try and envision the painting how i want it to to look and have a picture in my head which will help the the painting process so uh, off we go so i've uh, drawn sketched this scene out simplified it quite a bit that um there's probably 20 houses, but I've reduced it to maybe five or six, possibly. So apologies to the, the people who live in those houses that I've uh, got rid of. But um, it's got to be done. But, uh, certainly when working outdoors, the key is to uh, simplify, keep it simple. So I'm starting with the first wash, which is the, the sky. Got a nice graded blue sky here. But it's uh, darker at the top, so stronger internal value at the top. And then as it comes down to the, the horizon, it almost, the blue disappears. Oh, it's quite windy. So I can reduce the, the blue. Just a little bit of something on the palette here. Paint up into that. And just before this dries, I shall just go in a little bit stronger at the top with this blue. And then we can go straight down into the sea, which I should pick up some of this yellow, orange. Ooh. And a little bit of sparkle on the, the water, if we can. And then we've got these distant uh, rolling fields. So I don't want to have too much colour in these at the moment so keep them quite blue as well because they as they disappear off in the distance a bit of aerial perspective. Leave some of these white highlights maybe they could be some of these houses that I've left out. As I come to the foreground slightly, I can then start to maybe add a bit of a bit more strength to the the greens. This coming down, cut around these buildings, careful around the tops of these. Uh, building so I want a nice crisp edge for the rooftop on this one here particularly and now this is the foreground area here so I can even add a little bit of red warm this up now notice I've got this bead here this is keeping the wash alive right from the top to the bottom I keep 
going into it, reloading it, and then I can bring it down. So I'm using the principle that warm colours tend to come forward. So that's these, uh, this foreground here, which I've got the reds in there, and I've got the blues in the distance there. I will pop a little bit of purple in the right in the edge here. There's a bit of a lead in. This is nice and wet. I'll get some nice effects, hopefully, happening there. So I now need to let that dry. Shouldn't take too long, because there's a bit of a wind. It's almost dry there. So I'll go to a slightly different brush. It's got uh, more of a point and give me a little bit more control. Just do a little test, see if it is dry enough, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit damp here because I want softness here anyway. These are the, the furthest away, so we've got quite a lot of blue in there. This one that's a little bit closer, so I'll add a, a bit more strength into that one. Which will help with the, the illusion that that's coming a little bit closer. So now we've got these edges in the, well actually there's another distant mountain here. Can just about make out there's a nice green top to that one. Use a little bit of white gouache or Chinese white watercolour, whatever you want to call it, just to milk that up a little bit so it goes further back. these fields that we can actually start to see a bit of colour. You know, it's quite cool with the wind, the paint is drying really quickly on the palette here, which makes it difficult. It's all part of painting outdoors, it's not easy. I would suggest some of these edges. Because the paint is still quite wet here, they will soften, which again will help with that illusion that they're far away. And as they get closer to, to me, become more detailed. A little bit less blurry and soft, some harder edges 
as I start to hit the dry paper. And again, there's lots of hedges and details I've left out here because if I paint them all, it would become a right mess. So keep it simple. And as I get a bit closer, I can add more warmth. These ones that are quite far away can be cool. This is also going to make these areas wet so I can again put some details in but make, make it soft. Some trees and things. suggest these trees in the distance and that's what it is a suggestion I'm not painting individual branches and things can help define the shape of that uh, house I put in a some trees behind it there. this side of the houses in shadow or in shade just now need this uh, bush that runs alongside the, this farm or house where it's here. So got some slightly bigger trees here which will help with the uh, the illusion of uh, things being closer and further apart.
So now I just need to maybe strengthen this foreground slightly with a bit more warmth, which will help it to come forward. And let that mix with the hedge here. there's just a, a green field here in front of me but I can make it a little bit more interesting by adding a bit of warmth dries I can just have a little look and just strengthen any of these hedgerows that have faded away to nothing a few distant trees I'll just strengthen that these hedgerows we can actually use to guide the viewer's eye where you want it to go so you can describe the, the shape of the hills And just before this dries, I can just drop in maybe some of these yellow flowers I can see in the field here. shadow I had planned in this corner. And then we'll let that dry and see how it looks. 